This story is all about accountability. Accountability for a local police department and accountability for a woman with a long history of thumbing her nose at the law. One of them has taken responsibility. The other is still ducking for cover. A couple days ago, our undercover camera caught Rebecca Elwagi on foot, heading toward her home in Hamtramck. Could our action news investigation have scared her straight, convinced her to stop driving on a suspended license? Or is she just being more cagey about it? The damage is identical. You want to just tell us what happened? When I confronted El Wagi about a hit-and-run accident in Hamtramck a couple of weeks back, she went underground. Before my story even hit the air, her Durango disappeared. She shuttered up her house and kept her kids indoors. Neighbors tell me she's hidden her Durango, and she's been slipping in and out of her house through a back alley. So we went out looking for the Durango, and bingo. We found the SUV three-quarters of a mile from her house, parked a half block inside the Detroit border where Hamtramck cops normally don't patrol. More on the Durango in a minute, and we'll tell you how our investigation has changed the way Hamtramck police do business. Right now, let me remind you how I got on this woman's case. If the police can't aren't there to help you, then, you know, who is? It all started with an email from Joe Zago. He was sitting in this Hamtramck gas station one night when a blue Durango came flying in and rear-ended him. The driver threw it in reverse and took off. Joe ran after the SUV and got a license plate. Another witness got a good look at the driver's face, and the gas station security camera caught it all on tape. But to Joe's surprise, when Hamtramck officer Amy Buchel showed up, she told him, we don't take accident reports on private property. Hamtramck police refused to take a report, even after Zago went to the station and took it up with her boss. So we asked Channel 7 to investigate. When I tracked the license plate, it led me to Rebecca L. Waggie's Durango, and we saw her behind the wheel. Then I showed her picture to the eyewitness. Yeah, this is the lady, for sure. I'm 100% positive this is the lady. When the investigators checked El Wagi's driving record, it was astounding. Six pages long. She's been caught driving on a suspended or invalid license 13 times. She's been cited for driving without insurance, speeding, ignoring traffic signals, the child restraint law, and making illegal turns. She has arrest warrants out in Birmingham and Detroit, and she was still driving on a suspended license. You're missing some parts from your car? Not that I knew of, no. Did you rear-end uh, someone down at the gas station at Kniff and I-75? No, no, I didn't. You didn't? No. When I confronted El Wagi about the hit-and-run, she denied any involvement. But the hit-and-run Durango had left some broken parts behind at the crash scene. And when I looked at her front end, the broken parts fit. That's when she raced off, rolled through a stop sign, and disappeared. When I told the police chief in Hamtramck what we'd uncovered, he said he was reviewing their policy regarding accidents that happen on private property. And now, because of our Channel 7 investigation, things have changed. Police Chief Mark Kalinowski says he's changed department policy. Hamtramck police will now take accident reports on private property. And he says in the case we profiled, even with the old policy in effect, because of the circumstances, the officer should have used discretion and taken a report. And the chief went one step further. He apologized to the hit-and-run victim and invited him to come to the station and make a report. A Hamtramck police officer came out of the station, inspected the damage on Joe's car, listened to his story, and made a police report. I'm happy that they're going to follow up with us. You know, I hope they, they finally catch us, Lady and Buster, because that's, you know, that, that crap shouldn't be going on. And that brings us back to the dinged-up Durango. A neighbor tells me he saw El Wagi and her boyfriend park the car here shortly after I confronted her. Then it disappeared for a couple of weeks and showed up again. The day before you aired the story, um, they I saw them screaming at each other and arguing, and uh, they brought the car back here, I guess, just to leave it since it's out of the city that they got in trouble in. Joe Zago thinks it's time for this woman to stop ducking and running. We all do some, some things in our life that are stupid, and you know, but I mean, there's, there's just a point where you have to take responsibility. Police don't normally go out looking for people who have outstanding traffic warrants, but they're often arrested when they get pulled over for something else or if they have some other type of encounter with police and that warrant pops up on a computer check. If Rebecca L. Wagi is ever picked up, she'll likely be held for Birmingham police where she skipped out on a court date after being arrested behind the wheel with a suspended license. That was last year, and it was the 13th time she had been cited. Back to you.